Freediving is one of the world's most dangerous sports because it relies on a diver's ability to hold their breath for multiple minutes as they swim to great depths and back up to the surface. Born and raised near Dublin, Ireland, Stephen Keenan found a love for freediving back in 2009 when he discovered the sport while on vacation in Dahab, Egypt. Within a few years, he relocated to Dahab, where there was a thriving freediving community, learned Arabic, became a freediving instructor, and trained hundreds of students. In 2015, Stephen co-founded Dahab Freedivers with Spain's Miguel Lozano, one of the deepest freedivers on Earth, and Swiss freediver Pascal Berger. That same year, Stephen would record his best dive with a monofin to 267 feet deep, a depth well beyond the range of most scuba divers. Stephen's freediving shop was located close to the popular diving area known as the Blue Hole, and nicknamed the Diver's Cemetery. This well-known sinkhole is around 394 feet deep. The sinkhole leads to an arch that sport participants often try to reach. In 2017, Italian freediver Alessia Sacchini came to dive at Dahab Freedivers. She knew Stephen from previously meeting him at the Vertical Blue Freediving Competition, where he was a safety chief, and they developed a close bond and eventually became romantically involved. By then, Stephen had become a highly respected safety diver and coach. Safety divers monitor the safety of freedivers as they ascend before reaching the ocean's surface when they're at the highest risk of blacking out due to oxygen deprivation to the brain. Alessia wanted to cross the underwater area of the blue hole called the arch. The arch is an 85-foot rock tunnel set at about 180 feet deep. Alessia wanted to cross this arch on a single breath. Stephen was her coach at the time and organized the whole thing. He had organized crossings at the arch many times, and he had already crossed it himself. He put together a team. They rehearsed everything. It was all very planned. Alessia would be diving down into the blue hole without the assistance of a monofin, or any fins for that matter. She would then swim horizontally under the site's famous underwater arch, and then out the other side, where Stephen would be waiting at a depth of 164 feet to guide her to the surface. Freediving events are impossible to pull off without the work of a dedicated team of four to five safety divers. Diving is rarely the problem, it's the ascent. As competitors try to resurface after being submerged for so long, the partial pressure of oxygen begins to plummet in their bloodstream, putting them at risk for a blackout. The event took place on July 22, 2017. That day, visibility wasn't good, and the winds were high enough, about 20 miles per hour, that they were pushing the water around, creating currents that could push a freediver off course. But Alessia persisted. She dove down into the blue hole just fine, as planned. Then she started crossing under the arch. Under there, there were two tech divers that were filming her. Stephen had told her that the tech divers would be on her left, so she should try to swim close to the reef wall on her right so she wouldn't bump into them. Alessia followed these instructions. However, she didn't notice any change of light when she exited the arch, so she kept following the reef wall to her right, causing her to swim a little ways away from the buoy with a rope at the exit that was to her left. She was negatively buoyant because the arch is so deep down. This caused her to swim a little faster than what the safety team had simulated during the rehearsals in the bay. Alessia exited the arch faster than planned. The exit guide rope was maintained in place by one person, and the rope was right in the middle of the exit of the arch. Stephen was the first safety. 
Stephen was free diving down and was supposed to be there when Alessia would exit the arch, in case she didn't see the rope or needed to be escorted to it. So he was supposed to be there a few seconds in advance. He was then supposed to give the rope a couple of strong pulls, signaling to another person on the surface that they were starting the ascent. Another person was going to be the second safety at about 80 feet deep. And there was going to be a third safety at around 50 to 65 feet deep. Upon a signal that Alessia had entered the arch, one person on the safety team, named Lily Crespi, was giving a countdown to Stephen on when he should start his dive. When Lily Crespi gave Stephen the countdown, he told her to give him 10 more seconds for reasons unknown. So Stephen went down and he was 10 seconds late, combined with Alessia being a bit early. By the time he arrived at 164 feet deep, Alessia was quite far away from the rope, so he raced to her. The footage is on video from the other tech divers. When Stephen caught up with Alessia, they didn't have time to return to the rope and started to ascend. Alessia was swimming with no fins, and Stephen, who had fins, was following her up. During the first part of the ascent, Alessia was swimming by herself, and Stephen was following her to escort her to the surface. Towards the last part of the ascent, Stephen helped Alessia out by grabbing her hips and helping her to swim up to the surface. It is thought that Alessia arrived to the surface still conscious, but a bit hypoxic and out of it. During the whole swim back up, the current had pushed them very far away. They ended up at a shallow section called the saddle. After gathering herself, Alessia realized that Stephen was face down on the surface, not moving and not breathing. He had succumbed to an in-water blackout as he approached the last 30 feet of the ascent. Alessia reacted and turned him around, then started calling for help. But since they were so far away from the planned arrival spot, it took a while for them to be noticed. Finally, the team of people who were inside the blue hole at the start of the dive arrived first and started to swim back to shore with the unconscious Stephen. They tried to give him rescue breaths in the water on the way to shore. On shore, CPR was performed. At the time, ambulances were not allowed to go all the way to the blue hole and wait there. They had to put Stephen in a taxi and bring the taxi to where the ambulance was. Then, at just 39 years old, Stephen tragically died while in the ambulance to the hospital. A Netflix documentary on Alessia and Stephen was recently released called The Deepest Breath. Despite this incident, Alessia Zucchini continues to work as a professional freediver and competes in multiple international competitions each year.